Hi everyone, welcome to part two of my Helm's Deep toy box level. Now I'm constructing these clips in the same way as I would construct the level. So clip one was to deal with the explosion, although the explosion doesn't happen until halfway through the level. But we've got to set the logic up because these parts need to be in place for us to do all the fine touches. So it looks like we're actually doing it all out of sequence, pretty much like how you, how you film a, a film. Uh, we're getting the key scenes set up and then the, the action where all the actors and all the soldiers come in, that's really the final bit, that's the easy bit. So we're making sure we're creating all the various logic and like I showed you, that first clip was the explosion. Now I've exploded the hole because before that, hope, that explosion happens within the sea, we're going to have them try to breach over the top of the castle wall. Okay, and in that case, in this clip is purely to show you how to build a siege tower. So, what is a siege tower, you may ask? Well, let me show you what we're going to make, uh, and don't laugh. Now, this is a siege tower. It's not fantastic, it's not pretty looking. I tried various different options, and because there are no more tools coming from Disney, you're just going to have to make do. And this is my best variation of a siege tower made of simple straight uh, uh, blocks and painted to make it look out of wood. But that is what we're going to have advance across the castle and then our troops are going to go through that hole over the wall and attack us. So that's the plan of this particular level. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this, these siege towers move across through the trees and attack the actual army. Now, what I've done earlier, just a little bit of sneak preview, I prepared three little links trying to work out uh, the three different uh, distances where I want these to occur. So I placed these little bricks here. That was purely just so I could come back in my clip and show you where I want them to go. So we're going to create a path going all the way across. So starting from the first block, I think I went, uh, from where I've set it, uh, just to move it three places, right, and now I create a dot every fifth spot. Now that was three, by the way, but that's one, two, three, four, five, and then we do a block. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do this all the way to the wall. So every five, I'm going to put a point in. Okay? You could just do it all in one go. But in one of my future clips that are going to come out later this week, I'm going to show you how to slow down these siege t uh, towers from uh, advancing. So I'm going to need these points to stop and start it so we can delay it while we hold them off, while we try and defend it. Uh, and we needed to make sure that we had the map exploded. So I, just to make sure that the siege towers don't step in the way of the other bricks, that was the main reason. And I also wanted to make sure I lined it up not into the hole. And I'm just going to stop this just one brick away. And you'll see if I do every five, I should have had this bang on, like just one brick away the, from the wall. That is perfect. So that is my siege tower going to advance all the way across. And when it reaches that side, troops are then going to start climbing over the, over the wall. This is my next one, and purely by chance, I had these perfectly matched apart. Now you also notice that they're not perfectly lined up; they're slightly staggered. Uh, so they're all going to be launched at the same time, but because there's one has to travel slightly further, then what you you get is the effect that they are moving at different rates, so it, it looks a bit more uniformed. And again, every five. Uh, steps I'm going to put a point in and it's important about these steps because without these points you're not going to be able to slow the advance later on but we'll, we'll get to that a bit later at the moment let's just get the towels and let's show you how we get them moving across it doesn't have to be exactly five by the way it just gives you a rough idea I put these in because I was trying to work out what I was going to do uh, and this gave me the option to play around with it afterwards so well, I thought well let's do the, do these items and how will I slow these siege towers down there we go, next one. Now I've also done a slightly different format with box. Normally I get to show you how the uh, the level works and what I'm going to go through and explain it all clearly. And there's a reason why I haven't done it on this one is I actually haven't finished this level. I've spent so long trying to work out how I was going to do the mechanics. Um, it was just, I would never get it done, so I thought, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, we've got some good games coming out soon, and it's going to stop me from creating some toy boxes. I need to get this finished. So I'm actually building this as we go along. Now, I have done four of the clips already, so all I'm waiting to do is the voice voiceovers. I actually haven't got the end result, so I'm hoping this is going to work out quite good at the end. From what I've tested, it does look like it's going to be a success. Um, 
but I did do uh, another Jedi level, uh, and you know I did the um, I did a level called the what's it the Moving Pillars of Doom. Well, I've actually done another level called the Falling Balls of Death, and I was going to release that, but when I played it, it was so boring and so pants. Uh, I need to work on it. So I've got a few more Jedi levels coming. So don't worry about that, uh, and they'll come before Christmas. Uh, but these ones should keep you busy. Uh, the, this Helm's Deep level and the one I've got planned just before Star Wars Battlefront, I think will uh, you're going to like those and you're going to you're going to want to build them. Okay, so there are our three paths, and that is where the siege towers are going to advance and then stop. Okay, really straightforward, and it's just one way and stop. It's not, it doesn't go back and forth, just straight across all the way through to the very end. Now on my map you'll see I added a little bit of that extra ground area stuck in after the woods. I don't expect the user ever to be here so they should never ever see that so that's one reason why it should be okay. Now I'm just going to get rid of these little boxes, they're not lonely, they're purely just for reference points. So just get rid of those, they're not needed at all. Cool. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to build a tower, we're going to put these items on the box. So first of all we need some buttons to test it, yeah? So let's get some let's get some buttons here. Right, and another thing you might notice between this clip and the last clip, I sound a lot more awake. That's because I'm not doing this in the stupid early hours of the morning. I'm actually doing this at a reasonable time at night. But anyway, it's like slightly getting sidetracked, so apologies for that. Right. So here we got we've got a button, one button to reset it and one button to start it off. Okay. And I'm learning here, I don't need the three buttons like we did before. So this is my off button. So new logic connection when pressed, insert into there. So we're going to input a signal into there. Cool. In this item here, this is my on button. So this will set them going. And again, the buttons will get deleted. It's the logic gates we're going to use afterwards. So these are the ones I'm going to use in my main story. But in here, we're going to do right on output. Yeah, can we go to the three paths, which are quite nicely cut glass, and can we switch them off? just like we did in clip one regarding the wall. No difference at all here, it's exactly the same logic. New logic connection on output. Yeah, can we uh, turn them all off? So do it all for it. It's just three parts, so it's quite nice and easy. Okay. And you can just do one siege tower, you don't have to do three. Yeah. Right, so we've got this thing here, so we're going to do on output, we're going to go to the next logic gate, we're going to input it into there, and the reason we do it afterwards is we make sure we turn them all off first, and this one will reset them. So new logic connection, on output, can we reset all these paths? So again, click into here, can we do reset and play? I think I switched that to be on. I did, I switched that one, that was wrong, I'm going to have to delete that one off now. On output, not on, can I reset and play? That's the one I wanted. See, I'm flying through this one, and I need to do this with all, all, uh, all three of them. So new logic connection on here, reset and play. Now, when we load up the game, we're going to have a reset button that will input a signal into that uh, off logic gate, switch the ball off, and reset all the the game back. So when we we'll probably link it to a challenge marker. I uh, haven't got there yet. I haven't really thought that one through, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a challenge marker. Right now, this one turns the whole thing on. So on output. Can we just switch the item on? That's the easy one. Just turn it on. So this is the logic for us to test it all. And obviously I'm going to have a clip where we then join all these different se separate little sections all together. The exploding wall is one section. That's all isolated on its own. The siege tower is another one. That's another one isolated on its own. Uh, one of the effects I'm trying to get is trying to get the siege towers to burst onto fire when we slow them down. But we'll get there. And get ahead of myself. Let's just concentrate and get the siege towers working. Right, so that should be the last one. That is now all the logic complete. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to now build you a tower, showing you how all the elements are put together. Yeah, so I'm just going to get my creativity tool, well, not creativity tool, I'm going to get my basic shapes. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to physically build a tower and we're just going to put it at the side. Now, when you load up a toy box, it remembers the original place where you put those pieces, not before you attach it to a path. So you need to put it in a place that you aren't going to add any other objects. So you'll see here, under the basic shapes, we've got some curved shapes here. Uh, I'm going to grab one of these. 
Right, we've got some flat shapes as well. So these ones are going to be used as well. So right, this is the the front of the tower. Okay, so I'm just going to place this here to line them all up. So we have two pieces at the front. Then we have two very thin ones, and you'll see they'll only fit in a certain way. So we set them all up correctly. But for each tower, I expect the best thing to do is actually build it. So you know the pieces you're going to use. So you set the actual item up. So they're little bases. That's where the circle's going to appear. And then we need the top part to go with those. Oh yeah, so I need to do two little square little windows. Twist them round. And obviously I've got three towers, so you're going to have to do this three times. One I've prepared earlier, this is number two, and we'll do number three a bit later on. Right, and we use a little triangle here. Let's say I tried different designs. One of the designs was to be like a, a caterpillar tractor. It was more like a, an imperial trooper moving across. Uh, but I felt if I was going to stick with the castle, even though I'm going to use Star Wars characters in the battle, it still works quite well. Uh, it has to look like a siege tower, which it, it strangely it does. Once you get into the game, it actually does look quite good. At first glance, it does look pants, and I'll give you that. It does look pants. But I promise you, when you get to the end effect of this clip, and sadly, I don't show you all. All if you if you if you want to jump straight to it, go to the end and it shows you how it all looks like. Um, but it actually looks a lot more impressive once it's finished than it actually is. Right, so that is our siege tower. Okay, so what we're going to need to do now is we need to connect it to that actual path. Yeah, okay, now before we do that, we need to switch the path all off. So that's our reset button. So let's press that button. And now we're ready to take those pieces and link it to the path. Okay, so in Spark Mode, I'm going to grab each one of these and I'm going to connect it to a path. And we have to reassemble it on this path tool. So when you click it, and there's the piece, but I'm going to have to do all the whole pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to move these. Now I'm going to have to go to each one of these. So you connect it to the path, then you have to go onto the properties and go to Toybox Path. I'm going to leave it, I'll sort the speed out later, leave the speed it is. Change the it from looped to one way and stop. That is important. Right, and now you've got to use these horizontal, uh, vertical, or forward and backwards. But we have to move this one uh, to the left, and it varies differently depending which which angle you've done the map. So it's not always the same ones. But you'll see here we placed the, the green dot and we've moved it to the left. Okay, and we're going to do the next one. And you'll see as I was doing this, I kept on forgetting to change the path. So click on the object, move it across. Connect it to the path, toy box path. As you drop it in, it's not exactly in place because they're slightly squashed up. So I now need to move this now instead of to the left to the right. So get to the property of that object. Go to the properties, toy box path. Go right down to the very bottom. Change it. This is important, not from looped to one way and stop. Yep. Yeah. Then go back into toy box properties and now we've got to move it. Now you'll see here the camera angle is really crap uh, and you have to adjust it slightly. So you've got to just work it out. So sometimes you can see it's not going to... You don't get a perfect view and you can't really change it when you're doing this movement. So you're just going to have to sometimes guess and work it out. But that is bang on correct. Yeah, they're in place. That's bang in the middle. So now we're going to have to do the other pieces. So I'm going to do the bottom part of the circle. So again, onto there, toy box path. And that now drops it in. And you'll see that sticks out slightly. So go to properties of it. I'm just going to let this go through because you get to see how it works but changing that from a one way and stop and then you've got to then move these items and again it's looking how, how it moves and adjusts and because I find also this does help because we haven't done all the other logic we're doing the big stuff first we get to see this move occasionally I find that if you do the very complicated stuff it won't actually physically move and you have to keep pressing the reset which is really frustrating but You'll see here I'm adjusting it, and you see I can't see exactly where it is. So I, I'll go and choose something else. So sometimes if you can't see it, move up onto another item, and then it will change the camera view. That's a good little tip, actually. So once you've moved it, if you can't see it, go up to another setting, either adjust that, and it should hopefully change the view so you can see it. Now, it's not that complicated. It's just, it's just awkward and a bit time-consuming. And it's just going through, remember this part, 
my story plot properties go down, down to the very bottom and change that and as I say you'll notice that I'll forget to do that but when you repeat the same thing again it gets monotonous and your brain just switches off to do it right see that's gone to forward it's slightly different setting because it's the opposite and I want to move it across so let's go up so you'll see I sometimes move back and forth there you go sorted And the reason why it's not moving, by the way, is because once we came off the spark mode, we hit our reset button, which turned all the paths off, which stops it from moving. That's the important part. Otherwise, the whole thing moves off on ahead. If you see my other clips, you'll see that I try and move all these objects while the path's still active. Don't need to, do I? We can actually set it all up beforehand. All right, so now we connect this up. We want to lift this up, so we're going to have to use the vertical on this one. In this case, we're going to have to use the vertical. There we go. And then I've got to see, you'll see it twisted back and forth, left and right. There we go. And it wants to go back a bit, a little bit higher. So change the vertical again. Again, once you change the, the, the option, you'll notice the camera will automatically adjust for you. Okay. So sometimes go up and down and change it. And then we've got the horizontal. There we go. It's too far. There we go. Doesn't always change, by the way, but that's that one done. Now, you'll also notice that. I haven't used too many pieces, but every piece that we use, we are going to have to connect it to the path. You can't group join them together, you have to do each individual one. So the more complicated tower that you build, the more connections you've got to put together. So just be wary of that, because I've done some very, in my test pieces, I did some great ideas and I thought it's just going to take for ages. Now the downside with the path tool is that you can't get it to move round corners it won't do that uh, because when you move them in corners they'll all move at slightly different angles and the whole thing will fall apart like crap when you do a, when you do multiple objects on a part tool the idea thing is to keep it in a in a straight uh, route uh, I find as soon as you do any other thing clever on there it gets very complicated right let's do the long legs now and sometimes you can't see it so we go to the long legs on here move it up a little bit higher and now be careful here because what I want to do is you want to move it back first so uh, see, I'm just double checking here because I think I forgot the property setting. Did I change that one? See, I forgot to change that one. See, I missed it. Oh, I don't even saw that. Too busy connecting it up. And now, now that I'm confused, I'm always doubting myself on the other options. But we'll get there. Oh, I missed two of them. Not good. Okay, right. And now I'm going to have to check the third one again. It is important, this setting. It only takes a few seconds when you think about it. Right, we've done those, that's good. Right, let's go up. Okay, cool. Right. Let's get that vertical path moved. Now, be careful to move it across because the... Um, if it moves across it tends to disappear so in case I think what I want to do is when I do the prop to that straight away go in and move the the other setting but what I want to do is make sure I move it back towards the camera so change that option first one way and stop every time I go too far down you would have thought I've learned now this time I want to move it down towards me so toy box path uh, instead of going left yeah I want to move the forward that's right so I do want to go the other way but I actually want to do this forward bit first so it comes down towards me there you go it's coming towards me now that's good and you can see I can now move it and go back up keep going judge it move it back there goes that side there goes that one want to go back cool I think that's it yeah that's that's banging because I need to do the circles and they do the same with the other one. There you go, it's not too bad, it's getting there. I did panic when I first did this because I didn't realise how high you could set them off. I think it's about uh, 24 uh, you can go off. It just is the right height, you can adjust it without having to use two paths. And by keeping it onto the one path tool makes so much life easier stopping it. You don't want to have multiple paths being used because every time you switch one off, you've got to switch three off. And the more paths you use, if there are parts that are interlinked, when you switch one, there is always sometimes a slight delay, so you might get a little bit of buckling on the door. I know if you look at my blast door clip, 
sometimes they get out of sequence because when you switch them off there is that slight delay and it depends if there's too much going off on a level that may slow it down so try and if you can keep it all onto one uh, one path right so now let's get the roof on uh, and this is relatively going quite smoothly I'll make sure I connect on here. Uh, also, be careful not to do the, you know, when you press the circle button when you're coming out of the properties and, and the first circle button is a delete option, be very careful with that. And when you get it, think you've got it right, save it. Now, this is a bit interesting. You, I want to move it right up, yeah, but you'll notice here is I can't see because it, it goes off the screen. So I can move it up here. Now, I believe it was about 10. Uh, I think it was 12. But then if I go back to Toy Box and then go back to properties, it will then change the view of it so you can't see it so now you can see it again so let's move it back up again because I thought three it was six the right number right go back to vertical now you can't see it at all so can adjust it to the side there we go up we go it's just going up you can just see it there on the on the wire in the way go back down so it's 12 height is 12 and now I want to go left and right nope don't want to go back left and right come on which one is it so it's again checking which one it is there's it, perfect, that's it done, first one's fitted and I can come out and it will, and by the way it's not always going to be those those same ones that I've used it depends on if, if I built these on the other side of the map they would be the opposite way around I don't, I don't really get it but uh, it would just be different measurements but just be careful, That's you try to get reconnect it into shape so just keep uh, adjusting and moving them left, right and moving them across it, they should all fit in Right, so this is going to check on here. Now, this is when I panicked and didn't think I could move it high enough because I knew the box was 12. So I go to vertical. Uh, so it changed one way and stop because I always forget to do that. And I went vertical straight up to, so I know it's 12, so it's 16. Let's have a quick nosy. Right. And again, you can't see it now. You go, where the hell is it? So again, sometimes it come right out. And you can see 16. Oh, I went a little bit too high there. Did I go 18, in fact? and occasionally there when you change the colour it shoots to the bottom of the screen I was going to cut this out but I do find it quite good to show you that sometimes it just randomly jumps you throughout the map and you go what the hell happened yeah and whenever it does that I always think it's going to crash, always panic like don't crash no right so that's in place yeah and again I'm looking at trying to format it which I don't want to do yeah I'm just checking the property things because again I've forgotten to change the loop section see so straight into changing it one way and stop. There you go. So I advise you either do this in the morning, don't do it late at night because you're going to be too tired and you're going to make mistakes. Right, bring that down. So, let's have a look. There we go. That's the box. That's how it should look. So now I know the thing will all fit in. We'll finish off with the rest of the tower. And that's the trickiest part of this particular clip. Uh, you've all done path tools before. And it is just going through and making sure that they all merge to this block. Yeah. Now, so let's give you a little rundown on what's happened on the next clip. Uh, and I may be able to get these two clips out, the uh, clip two and three out together at the same time. Uh, obviously, this, this clip is getting the tower and getting it to advance all the way to the end against the wall. So that's the object of this particular clip. The, the clip three is actually getting the enemies to appear and breach, breach the wall. So what we're going to show you there is how once they get to the end, how they appear and the enemies will then constantly in an ever ending loop carry on appearing over the tower that's what we will show you in clip 3 uh, in clip 4 is that as they advance in I'm going to show you how to stop the towers from getting to the place, how to slow them up ok but I'll just do those, but that's the, the, the answer we're going to do with those particular options and I'm just changing all the properties now also to make my clip uh, smaller I'm only doing the one tower you will have to do this for the other two towers as well yeah 
So you're going to have to then set that up so the other tower will work, do the same thing. So you're going to do the, uh, for the three paths, the three towers. You might just want one uh, siege tower, it doesn't, it doesn't have, you don't have to do the whole lot. And like I say, I'm doing this on a PlayStation Pro because then I can get a higher resolution capture. Uh, I don't have a 4K TV or anything flash like that, so um, there's no benefit for me on that side, but it does benefit on my video capturing, so that's quite good. The only downside is I've got to keep the video file under 4 gigs, uh, and if I do like a 46 or 47 minute uh, clip, it's just under 4 gigs, which is quite large. So, uh, But it's a lot sharper, so I think we'll keep it in this particular format. Are you all happy with that? Alright, so that should hopefully be, oops, one too far. So there's a lot of going in and readjusting it and moving it. As long as you have connected that object to the path. Again, I press triangle to format it, it sent me to the other side of the flipping map. So I need to go back. As we go through. Now, one thing I, um, I'm only just getting, yeah, and I really am only just working how they're getting used to this. When I uh, build a map, I want it to be to look perfect at any angle that you view the map in. I want it to be an island. I want it to be a city. I want it to be from any view. And when you're spinning the map round, you'll have large flat sections that look odd and don't work. And you go, Ugh, that doesn't look pretty. But one thing I always don't realize is that when you actually play the game, you don't see those sections. Yeah, You only see as if you're right in the woods. So here where I've got this wood that's round the, round the side, yeah, you don't actually see the big flat back of the uh, the mountain range at the back of the screen because I don't ever expect the user to be there. And I'm now getting that into my head, that's what actually happens. And then you can concentrate more on the actual gameplay uh, and you'll notice some of my levels are hopefully getting a little bit better structured. I'm not too focused on certain little boxes. Right, uh, another little thing that I'm not explaining at the moment, but I will do later, is that you will should notice a dragon flying around. Now some of you know how to get the dragon to appear, uh, but there's a certain particular toy you need to use, which uh, you don't need to place it, I think it's available for everybody, but again, we will cover that later. Alright, let's move this up. So, we keep making sure we change all these settings. So it's a bit of a long section this, but again, I just wanted to, sh you see each stage done uh, and you're aware of it. I'm not going to do it for both both towers and get used to see how I do it. Like it goes off the screen, you can't see it. So sometimes you have to move it up and down. Just, where did I put that? So that one went right the wrong way. So now I need to move that back to the side. Now, if you're using this, by the way, and it doesn't doesn't work yeah you can't see it moving you, you do the left and right but the actual thing doesn't move at all what you're gonna have to do is come out of it and go and press your off button again and that resets it all each time so occasionally you have to do it but because we haven't got too much logic and then you'll notice on my gauge my logic is only halfway up and it's quite a reasonable size lap, uh, map so I'm quite pleased the way that's gone so it's giving me a hopefully we'll test it once we uh, start putting in the uh, troops Right. Okay, I'm just now checking because I've forgotten to do the other settings. Ah, the one won't stop. So once you forget to do one, you then doubt did you do any of the others? Right, so we have got two of the slants. We are almost there. I know it's painful. Yeah, please come speed up so I can get it on. But you don't need to rush it. Now I've gone to the properties of the path tool here, not the properties of the actual object. So if you go a little bit higher, again these are little mistakes you'll you'll do as well. And if you're happy with certain things, save it, come back to it, save it, come back to it. You can always play these clips back again. Now I believe while I'm just finishing this roof, uh, uh, it's the Paris uh, uh, Games. Uh, conference or whatever it is on the 30th of October or something is anyway it's next week uh, 
and uh, the one game that they have promised to sh give us some news about is the game called Dreams. Now it's me and Molecule, Molecule if I can pronounce their name correctly, they're the ones that did Little Big Planet, uh, and, they're, and in that game you can design levels and stuff like that. So I'm intrigued to see what this Dreams game is going to be like, what type of things are you going to create, are you going to be able to create games like this, or is it more of a, um, a way of creating like cartoon stories? I th I got a funny feeling that it's more for creating stories, not gameplay. I could be totally wrong, so I'm quite excited by that because there is nothing else coming from anybody else. Although I have gone onto the website to Avalanche uh, Studios, and they are saying that they can't divulge any information at the moment, but they are working on new projects. So fingers crossed they are creating a new version, uh, a completely new engine altogether, a new game. Uh, I, don't, I think myself Infinity is, is no longer and I think, uh, I, in fact I don't actually want um, the new Infinity game, I'd rather have a brand new game that, that copies elements from this, have a completely new game that says right okay look sod you uh, uh, Disney, we're going to show you how it's done. Uh, here's a completely new game uh, and put it together. I thought if, if Warner Brothers have it, they could have it, instead of calling it Infinity, Disney Infinity, they could call it The Matrix. Um, and just one other thing here while I'm putting these together. One thing I also thought was, um, it's great having all these film tie-ins, and I'm a big Star Wars fan, I love Marvel as well. But one of the things I, I've been watching and reading with all Disney Infinity, and one of its failures is the various licenses they have to pay for. Even though I was, I thought Disney owned all these things, they had a very lot of issues on trying to get the right license and characters in the right place. So I have to say, I wouldn't actually be bothered not to have uh, um, a Harry Potter set or anything like that. It'd be quite cool. But if I could dress my characters up in any clothing like, even put a wizard's outfit on. It doesn't actually have to be Harry Potter. You'll be amazed that people are quite happy to have close to it. If you look at um, Grand Theft Auto game, you can buy all these various sports cars. They're not actually the licensed sports cars, so they can't use them. They can't use the names. So that's why you'll find all the cars in GTA have got weird names because they don't pay Porsche or Lamborghini to have those cars. But the car is still the same car. So. And no one's got a problem with it. Everyone likes buying the extra vehicles and stuff like that, and that's made fortunes on it. So I'm a bit, I'm a bit, so really, do I want it? I just, just give me something I can build games on. That would, I to me, would be ideal. So fingers crossed, we've got something, some news coming out. Uh, there is a rumor. Uh, I never got into the Lego Dimensions, but it looks like a rumor that that is going to slowly stop as well. So I don't see a games to life game coming, but I can't see why they don't still build an engine to allow you to build your own games. I thought Lego Worlds was going to do it personally, but it didn't do. Right, I've been rambling along there while I've been doing the final uh, sections. You can see if I do it early on, I've got a lot more energy <laughs> than if I do it in the morning. So you might find me more annoying in this clip, so apologies. There we go, our tower is complete. It is all set up and linked to the path. There you go. So the next stage is to actually colour in the tower. Now you'll see I've just gone to the object and pressed the triangle tool. Now when I did this uh, in the clip it was never meant to go this fast. This is the bit that was a bit weird for me because when I've, the size of the map I've got, when I tell it to choose a colour it took a good, I don't know, 20 seconds, but you'll see here, as soon as I change an object, it's instant. Look at that, it's changed straight away. That is actually not me editing the video, that is done straight away. Um, so there's a Concrete 2 option I found, but um, when I did the other tower, it took ages. There's a good like 30 second gap between each one. So you may find it's quick for you, you may find it's slow, uh, but if it's slow, you just have to wait and you can move on to each box. So it's a bit painful to do this one. So we're now going to change this to wood. I think I used the wood one, so where is it? There was different types of wood, but there's one called... Uh, there's just one just called wood on this list. I think there's wood 2 and wood 3, but there we go. That's one, just wood. That's what I did on there. And look, it just changed instantly, but it never did that uh, on any other object that I filled in. Now, 
just stressing out here by the way we did the foot when we did the wall we were able to change the color you can't do the option to fill all now you have to do it on each one individually because if you do change this one the wall will change as well so we have to go into each one of these and physically change the color there's not that many pieces so it's not too long uh, but like I say it was never this quick when I when I did it for the other towers and all the other test models I did it was never this quick Here's a weird looking little tower. But its technical term is called a siege tower. Right, so in this one I didn't use wood, I wanted it slightly different, so I used the tin roof. I quite like the tin roof one, I thought that was quite good. Uh, and the reason why they tend to be made out of wood, by the way, was because when the armies turned up against the castle, they would measure the castle walls and then build it by local trees nearby to match the wall height. And they'd build it there and then on set. See, a little bit of histor historical fact as well. Alright, so settle this up. And now, see, it's not looking too bad. Now the good thing also is when we set the path going, they will just go straight through the trees. It doesn't stop or crash, which is quite nice. But there is our siege tower. Right, so what we'll do is we'll test it. Yeah, we'll test this option going across. So I'm going to change this setting. Now, I'm just going to go to the tool here. And I'm actually going to go to the path tool. And I'm going to change the speed to a really low speed, 25. I'm not going to change it for all the other objects. Now, by just doing that, every object now is set to 25. Yeah, so I only have to do it once and that is now set up on the screen. So that's down to 25, so it's a slow pace. So let's turn it on. And hey presto, there it goes. Now while I've set that on, I've just jumped me all the way to the other side of the castle. Yeah, where I'm now going to view this tower uh, advance towards me. Now as you'll see, it's coming through the trees. Now I could make the trees slightly better away, but I'm quite happy to do that because in the object of the game is I don't want the user to know what they are. Now in one of my clips we want to stop these towers moving across as they come forward to you. They're gonna, uh, we need to stop them. So what I think I'm going to try and do is try and get it to shoot some targets inside the, uh, the little window, the little gap. So we can shoot it. So I can jump up here and try and slow those down. So using my bow now I want to try and shoot shoot through there. That's what I'm going to try and do. And if I do I can hold them off now obviously at the same time we're going to have three towers and at the same time I'm going to have people fighting me so I've got to try and hold them all off on the screen. Now one thing I noticed in my lovely special effects coming through it's a bit boring isn't it? I mean the towers coming through which I get the logic but it looks a bit a bit naff. Yeah, It's not bad so we need to put some snazzy in this. I want some ground rumbling on the ground because this is moving along the ground. There should be some dust coming up from here. That should add the effect. And that should give you some quite cool feeling on the screen. And if I've got troops around it, that should add to the effect quite nicely. So trust me, when you've got three of these coming across and you've got to try and stop them, and as soon as they hit the wall, we're going to have an enemy appear. Uh, and it's not too bad. So give it its due. It's the best tower I can come up with, but I think once it gets here, it gets quite good. I, I quite like it. So give us your feedback. Tell me if you think this looks good or not. You haven't seen the end result, so you're going to have to give your final judgment. But you'll see here, as it comes up, it will hit the tower. Yeah, and there you go. Now I couldn't end on that for this particular clip, so I'm just going to give you a pre preview of the next clip. Yeah, so when it reaches the tower, this is what's going to happen. So I'm just going to give you a little sneak of what we're actually going to do in the next clip and add just a little special effects to it. So this is now looking better. Three towers with dust all coming. Now in my next clip, I'm going to show you how to add the dust effect. Yeah. So we've now got the towers. You're going to go and repeat the three towers that we've done on this clip that were set up. But we've got the dust moving across now. And you've got to admit, now that's looking quite good. Yeah. And in the next clip I've got coming, I'm going to try and get that finished. You could have two uh, on the same day, hopefully. But on the next clip here, you'll see as they reach the tower now. So that's the tower part. Dun, dun, dun. Troops are now going to peer over the wall. So it comes up on here and they're going to be started. So as you'll see, they come up, you'll see a little thing start moving up. And we have some enemy appearing on the side. And they're all coming up on the side. Here comes up the thing. Bridge. 
And I've got these set in a loop. So when you kill these, because the breach tower is now against the wall, once I kill it, they are constant. They don't go because the towers are there. We, we've let the towers reach us. We can't stop them now. Well, that's it, and I'll get that shown in the next clip. Don't forget to like the clip if you've enjoyed what you've seen, and uh, I will see you guys soon. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Speak to you soon. Bye.